Hi, welcome to this edition of Business Fan Disability. I'm very excited today because I have somebody who is such, and I don't like to use the word inspiration because, because I don't like, like it being used on me very, very, very much. But, but for me, as, as, as a woman who has, who, who's not married or who doesn't have children, I've always wondered what it's like to, to be in those shoes with a disability. And Valerie has clearly shown that that is possible. So thank you so much for joining yeah. us, Valerie. Valerie has cerebral palsy like me, but my hair is, 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 is plastic, I believe. You have plastic cerebral palsy, right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, I have, I have asked as yeah, so yeah. So I'm not really sure what the difference is. I know that I'm, I'm ex I used to be extremely spastic. I've had several surgeries and I'm, I don't know if you've been in the same boat, but. No. No, okay. I, I didn't, yeah. I, I didn't go, go, go the surgery. My, my mom decided to, to treat it with, with the therapy as opposed to surgery. Yeah. Yes, awesome. Yeah, we, um, I, I did, we went through the surgery way and it, I mean, it actually did help tremendously, but as we know, it still is a challenge day to day. Um, so we just get through it. But, 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 yeah. but, but as you have grown older, what kind of changes have you, have you come across in your body, in yourself? Um, what kind of changes as far as like your throughout mobility? my life? Exactly. With regards to your mobility, your what, what what you could do, but it's what you can't do now, and all those things. Because I'm always complaining that, that there's no research about adults with cerebral palsy mm -hmm. as we grow older, so we don't know what to expect. All the research and things are done on children, so everything is centered around children. And I'm always saying that look, the children grow up to be adults, and, and we also need to know what to expect as we grow older. I can't, I can't agree with you more. I always say that um, it's so funny because exactly as a child, I feel like I had a lot of one-on-one -on -one physical therapy, a lot, to, a lot to turn to. And um, as an adult, it kind of just ended, you know, and it was just like, well, good luck. And I'm like, wait, there's no cure. There's, what do you mean? Well, good luck. And so, um, and you know, another thing that I, that I always beg to differ with, with doctors about is uh, the progression. They say, oh, well, CP is not a progressive condition. And I'm like, really? Do you have it? Because I beg to differ. I feel like um, as I get older, it's it's definitely challenging as far as getting around. It's not like it used to be. It's, it's um, I'm tired. My, I've had a hip replacement. My um, I ended up getting arthritis. And so about uh, 10 years ago, I had a hip replacement. And that's, that's a huge gen adjustment. I'm, I was like, 28 years old and now I have a hip replacement. Um, I never use the shower chair. I've always, so the way I get around is either by crutches, um, a mobility scooter, or now I use a walker in the house if I want to, I have like a tray I put on it if I want to like carry something or I think with CP, we, you know, we just adjust as you know, we just, we figure things out. And so, um, Having children, you know, I was always told, oh, I don't think you should have kids and, you know, things like that. And, and I'm very hard headed. So I'm going to do whatever I want. I'm not going to listen. And uh, I want a kids. And so I, I have three amazing children, but I never sugarcoat anything. A lot of people um, with CP or just disabilities in general ask me, you know, is it hard? It's, it's the hardest time of my life. It's the most trying time of my life but I wouldn't take it back for anything. Um, I did have my children naturally, or not, let me not say naturally. My, my last one, I didn't have an epidural, but I, I had them vaginally. So I didn't have C-sections. Um, I was very off balance. As we know, you know, when you're pregnant, you're heavier in the front. So I was, you know, I leaned forward a lot. I fell a few times. And so, yeah, I mean, it's extremely trying. Um, as I get older, like I said, doctors say it doesn't progress. I, I, I think everybody in, in life progresses. You know what I mean? I feel like uh, wear and tear. You know, we get older. Some people get on walkers just because that's what it is. 
I agree. And I agree because I mean, I also have have, have also a psoriasis on my hip, and, and I also have sciatica. And I mean, those those things are painful, very painful, and they can, they can just screw up your whole life if you, if you don't know how to manage it. And I guess their their, their definition of of pro progressive is is is, is different from, from what we see as pro progressive because I mean, as you go. And besides, they, they tell us that that, that the wear and tear of our bodies is four times that of, of somebody without CP. So obviously, we, we, we our bones and our joints and things would, would become older more quickly than a uh, more worn out than the average person. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Definitely. So, so your pregnancy, I'm, I'm very curious to know about how you handled it because I'm like, okay, so if I ever get pregnant, how am I going to handle it? Will I, will I be in a wheelchair throughout the period because I don't want to fall and all those yeah. things? And, and, and I watched your, your video and you said that you had miscarriages before, before you finally got, 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 got pregnant I was able to carry it full term. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, and I must commend you because I mean, for you to actually go through through it so many times and then you, you got your child, it's really a sign of fortitude and hard headedness, as you put it. Yeah, you know, it was, it was hard. And I give all the, the glory and the honor to God because I, I just knew that I was going to be a mommy. I wanted to be a mom. I, and like I said, I'm very, I'm very hard headed. Um, but it didn't take away the pain. You know, I, every time I would get pregnant, I would go to about, I would say eight weeks and then I would go in and, and I just, I would hear the, the sad news, you know, the baby, we don't see a heartbeat and, and I'd have to go through the devastating pain of losing a child. And, and I, I, I don't know, I, I even went to, I had a tubal pregnancy at one time and I don't think it had anything to do with cerebral palsy at all. It, you know, women, we, we have, yeah. difficulties and it, it's just the way it is. Um, with fertility. So uh, luckily I came across an amazing doctor and, and he's seen my pain and he's seen how, how much I wanted a child. So he uh, recommended it was a fertility drug that I, I took. Uh, I took it vaginally for 12 weeks, twice a day, and it made my cervix stronger. And that's, that's what he, you know, his wife, able body, she was going through the same thing. So she also used the same drug. And that's how I had my first child, Valentino. Uh, he's now 12 years old. And and it's funny because a lot of people are like, well, you know, did you worry about your child having CP? And, and I think a lot of people don't understand. It's, CP is not a disease. It's a condition and it's, it just happens. So um, I think even knowing that, even knowing that, you know, it's not hereditary, things like that. I watch my, each of my children so closely because, you know, a lot of times people think, take things for granted. So when I would see my kid pull himself up on the, on the, uh, on the crib, I'm like bawling, crying. And my husband's like, I'm like, he's doing it. Like he, I'm watching his legs, even though, again, I know he's not going to have it or, you know, he's fine. It's just like, oh, they're going to, they're going to make it. They're going to be okay. You know, cause I would never want my child to go through the, the heartache that I go through or that somebody else goes through. So seeing my children grow and walk and crawl, it was just, I was, I was so happy. And so I have a 12 year old, I have a four year old and a five year old. So um, I've been through uh, some divorces. <laughs> I'm, I've been, I've had, you know, I'm normal. I'm, and that's the thing I think that people look at us differently. I'm like, look, I have the same issues as anybody else. I had failed marriages, I had great marriages. It, it's what it is. And so, um, you know, with my, with my two other children, my, my husband's actually, he's South African. He's from South Africa. And we met in high school. And after high school, he went back to South Africa. And um, I always had a huge crush on him. Like he was like the hottie, like all the girls liked him, but I was insecure. I was the girl in the wheelchair. I was a little more quiet, timid, you know, it's intimidating. Um, and so out of high school, I reached out to him. I was going through a pretty bad divorce and it was a hard time. Anyways, um, we decided to meet up a year later after my divorce was finalized and we met up in the country, Panama, because he's not a U.S. citizen. So uh, I got pregnant the second trip. <laughs> I flew back and forth on my own, which was 
crazy. I flew there three times. I've never left. I've never flown on my own. I think, I don't know if you've traveled, but the air, I have. I have. Oh, I, I've traveled, traveled a lot. I've traveled on my own. I've traveled with, with assistance. And Good it, for you. So you literally have to plan every step of the way. You have to my plan. You have to plan your wheelchair. You have to plan when you when you get to the to the to your destination. You are usually the last person to get out of the plane. You don't yeah. nobody has to get out before you. And sometimes the 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 assistant who's bringing the wheelchair doesn't make it on time, so you end up spending a long time in the plane waiting for the wheelchair to come. And you're the last person to 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 be some back from the plane. Yeah, so it's, it's challenging. It is yeah. challenging. It's very very challenging, and it's not it's not that straightforward. I mean, I look at people who are like, oh, I'm I'm traveling here. And they just get up and go, and they don't have to think about half the things that we have to think about. Yeah, it's it's intimidating, and and uh, you know, and 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 everyone, well, you're so strong, you're so strong, and and sometimes you just want to say, well, I don't want to always be so strong. It's it's tough, you know, and that's that's the reality of it. And so, yeah, I, I got pregnant. My my husband didn't have any children, so we we planned. Um, our child and and I got pregnant with our our second baby. I'm sorry, with my, my second child, his first child, okay. um, and the second trip in Panama. And I flew back one more time, and then uh, my husband he stayed in Panama so that I could see him instead of going all the way to South Africa. And then on my third trip, he went back to South Africa. We did a 90 day fiance visa, and he came to America ten days after my son was born. So he watched him be born. Uh, my labor on FaceTime. So that was a, it was an amazing experience. And then uh, six months later, we had our daughter, Charlie, or we got pregnant. I got pregnant with my daughter, Charlie. So back to back babies. And that was, that was really, really hard. Um, so the whole time that I was pregnant with my second child, I only had my son, Valentino, you know, living with me. So I remember one night I went to the bathroom and my son was at the time, he was only six. So I went to the bathroom and I fell, I missed grabbed the counter and I fell and I was big and pregnant. So he had to call my mom and she rushed over to help me up. And I mean, like I didn't land on my tummy or anything like that, but I mean, it, it was scary. And so, but like I said, now I, I wouldn't change it for the world. And now my kids, you know, it's funny because kids just adapt. A lot of times people ask me, do your children take advantage of you? And I'm like, uh, no, <laughs> are you crazy? <laughs> no, they don't take advantage of me. Not at all. And so, um, yeah, I mean, they just, they just adapt. They roll around with me on the scooter or they take, they take care of their mama, they know, and, and they don't, they don't think differently. I'm, I'm still the mom. So, you know, the, there's no taking advantage. Not at all. <laughs> I think I always say that it, it is, it is how we portray ourselves that people would, would, we would accept us that way because if we portray ourselves as being weak, weak and all, that's how people will see us. But if we portray ourselves as being strong, well, that is how people will also accept us. And, um, and and talking about children taking advantage of you and other things, for me, I always wonder, like, if you have so so you know how 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 children around the age of one, two, when they start walking, they, they want to learn all over the place and you can't change them. And mm -hmm. how did you manage, how do you handle that period until, the, until, he, until they could understand that mommy cannot run after me? Uh -huh. Yeah, I, so I spent a lot of time in the house. Um, the only time I would ever go out, so Valentino was seven years, you know, age gap. So, um, he, him and I, I, um, either I was in the house or I would, I never walked around by myself on my crutches until he was about two. So I always had him in my, on my lap, in my scooter. Um, and so I basically, I would take, I don't, I don't know how it is. You're, you're in Nigeria, right? Ghana. Oh, Ghana. Okay. Yeah, Ghana. So I don't know how it is out there, but, um, here, so I, I would have, I have it like a scooter lift, like a crane that I would manually take out of my car and it would 
kind of, you know, hang my scooter and build it and stuff like that. And I would tell my, even when he was a baby, I would say, hold on, mommy's going to get the scooter and I'd have all the windows down so he can hear me. I'm getting the scooter. And then I would take the scooter out, drive it next to the car, pivot myself, balance myself, pick up my baby, sit on the cars. And, and I mean, it was a long transfer, but then I would hold him and get him out. And I would always park in the back row because I didn't want people to say, oh my gosh, can I help you? Because at the end of the day, I don't know if they're going to run off my child. Like this is my baby, you know? So um, I would just, I would figure it out. And it, it was, it's, it was challenging that, you know, like that was those literally, those were the best times of my life, but also a lot of crying, a lot of crying because uh, I needed so much help. And so I didn't usually leave a lot by myself. I usually had somebody with me, but it was very hard. And, and I remember even when it was time to, to bathe my children, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it because if I got on the ground after I had my hip replacement, it was really hard for me to um, get from the ground to the, you know, standing up. It was just extremely challenging. So if I got on the ground to wash my baby and to hold my baby, well, now I don't have any balance. And so I'm going to drop my child. So I would, you know, I would cry and I would just, it, and after you have a baby, your hormones are insane anyways. So I was really, I was really down on myself. I was really sad because I just wanted to be able to do it on my own. And, you know, it, it takes a village to raise a child, even an able-bodied person. It's, it's tough. It's just that I think I had so much pride at the time. And I was like, no, I want to do it myself. But I had to put myself aside because the safety of my child wouldn't make sense. I couldn't do it myself. I needed help. So I just, um, I figured things out. And then, you know, it's, it's tough for the first few years. But then once, like my kids now, I'm like, get on your shoes. Let's go get it. Let's get going grab my crutches, grab this, grab that. And, and we roll, we go everywhere together, but it, it was, it was some tough times in the beginning. It was definitely hard. Definitely hard. Yeah. And I like, I like what you just said about, about accepting help because for some of us, it's so difficult for us to accept help. And I yeah. don't, and, and people who are not in our situation, do not understand how difficult it is for us to accept help. And sometimes they are right. like, but I want to help you. What is the big deal? But, but I always say that, look, there are so many things that we cannot do that we need help with, that, that the things that we can do, we, we, we want to do them ourselves by all means. Even though yeah. some, sometimes we, we, we may need a little help here and there. And it, 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 it's a bit difficult to ask for, for that help, because you are asking for help for a lot of other things. I don't know whether, whether you also feel that way sometimes. Definitely. It's hard for me. And you know, even um, being a wife, so like I said, my husband's from South Africa. I, it was, it was a difference, a difference in everything. We had a big yeah. adjustment. And so I was never very domestic, right? I'm like, <laughs> Uh, I'll go to fast food. I'll buy this. I'll buy that. And my husband was raised, you know, like cook dinner, do this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, are you kidding me? So it was tough. You know, it, it, like I, I was, I needed help and I didn't want to show like weakness, like, oh, I'm not as strong as her. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I think that's a really big thing. And, and, uh, you know, just us asking for help here. And I think that's for anybody in general. I think it's a pride thing. But with our situation, there's no hiding it. There's no camouflage. You can see I need help. I'm gonna need help with the door. Do I wanna ask you for help? Mm, I'd probably rather fall, but I'm gonna need help with the door, you know? Or I'm gonna need help with the kitchen and things like that. So I think it's just humbling yourself. And, and at the end of the day, you know, people, they're gonna, they're gonna judge no matter what. They're gonna say what they're gonna say no matter what. And we just have to keep it moving, you know? I think that people with disabilities are enormously, I think we're amazing. I think we're so strong and and uh, we've been through so much more than the average person and we have so much to offer to the world. I think it's a, dis, it's a discount. You're discounting yourself if you don't get to know someone like us because we have so much to offer. We've struggled, but we're still fighting and we're still continuing. 
Yeah, I always say, say, say that most people cannot go to half the things that we go to on a daily basis. And especially those of us who have been disabled all, all our lives, because this is all we know. And, right. and, and for me, I, always, I also say that if I were to have a disability in my life, I'm happy that I had it from, from birth because this is the only life I know. I don't know anything else. As opposed to those who got disabled midway through life, then, then they go into depression and some of them even commit suicide. And, yes. all those things. and for me, I'm like, but this is what I go to every day. So what is the big deal? Why are you making such a big deal out of it? But, but then because they have had a different life than, than what we know, it makes it even more difficult for them to accept. Yeah. Well, I agree totally. Well, yeah, and we were on, I don't know if you've seen the show, Born Different. I watched um, it. Yeah. So, you know, the outreach on, so when I did Born Different, I'm a licensed real estate agent. I kind of put that on the side. And, and the reason being is when I was an agent and I'm still licensed because the test was so hard. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to lose that license because that was a big accomplishment. That was tough. And I think that, so when I was agent, I didn't like it because I felt like I was put on display. I felt like I was there to do a job. I want to help you find your dream home or sell your dream home. But it was constantly questions to me. Are you going to be able to do this? Can you handle this? How are you going to do that? And I was like, you know what? I'm not in it for this. This is not what I want. And so after the show went, it's it's huge right now. It's like, like 9.5 million views, something crazy. And I think it's not because of cerebral palsy. I think it's because it's relatable. Every single one of us in life have something that is holding us back. And, and people want the underdog to win. So they're like, oh man, if she can do it, I can do it. And so... I told my husband, I said, you know what? We need to start our nonprofit. I really want to get involved with the disabled community because I never was involved. And not for any reason. I just, I, I live my, I, I don't focus on my CP. I live my life like I got things to do. Yeah, I got CP and it's more of a pain in my butt than anything. It's like slowing me down from what I want to do. But I, I, I live a normal life. And so when I had the outreach of so many people reaching out to me, I said, we got to start this organization and I no longer want to do real estate. I want to be a licensed or a, a certified life coach because I feel like, like you said, I think physical disabilities drip down to mental health. And, and a lot of people forget about that. You know, you have to overcome anxiety, depression, acceptance. It's not just physical, it's mental. And so I wanted to be able to be there to support people. So now I'm a full-time coach for our organization and I love it. And it's not just for disabled people. Like I said, we're people, we have genuine problems, just like anybody else. You know, it's, we have this stupid situation called CP, but it doesn't change that we don't love and we don't want to be desired and we don't want to love some, you know, everything is the same. There's no difference in that for human. So, I mean, that's how I feel about it. Yeah, I totally agree. And, you, I, I, and on your video, uh, One Different, I saw that you said you went to the Euromed Center in Poland for, mm -hmm. for treatment. I also went there. In, in, in the yeah. Year, yeah, in the year 2000. Wow. Yeah, I, was, I, I also wore, wore the Adeli suit and took yes oh that's awesome yeah yeah so, so, so i never met anybody that has done that that's awesome yeah so what what was your experience there there like i mean it's just i really loved loved it there the, the therapist was so dedicated and so amazing and so yeah i loved it yeah it was amazing it was hard work yeah uh, it was hard work it was hard work, hard work. One month, one month of constant therapy. It was, it wasn't easy at all. Oh my gosh! You know, they told me that when we went down there because I was in high school when I did it. So when I went, my understanding was that you learn how to walk, and I don't know if you use assistance or anything to get around, but yeah. that's what I was told. And so I went down there with the mentality that I'm going to learn to walk. 
So before the end of the session, before the, the full month, and like I said, I was in high school, so I was, I had to bring my schoolwork with me and like, I was a little brat. I was like, Oh, I don't want to do this. I'm, this is hard. And it was, it was exhausting. And, um, by the end of the month, so I, um, my nationality, I'm Polish and Italian, but I'm, I live in America. So I don't speak any other languages. My husband, like I said, he's South African. He speaks, uh, Afrikaans. Mm-hmm. And so when I went to Poland, my maiden name is Yuzik. So that's Polish. So they said, oh, you should know, you you should know Polish, this and this. And I'm like, I, I don't, I don't know Polish. <laughs> and so I just remember them telling me everyone, Jin Dombre, and, and really pushing me and things like that. And, and I told myself, um, by the end of this, I'm going to walk because that's what I was, I was told. And you know what, by the end of that 30 days, they had me walking around that room by myself. Not like I wasn't like Miss Model, you know, getting down, but I was walking, I was taking steps. And so I would walk, I would have my hands up like this, like a baby, you know, we're trying to find our balance. I don't have balance. And uh, they would tell me one hand for boyfriend, one hand for boyfriend. And they would push my hand down so I could walk like this for my boyfriend. But it was an experience of a lifetime. And, um, and yeah, and, you know, I think also in America, I think that there's, and, and this is my own opinion. I think they're so afraid of being sued and this and that. And in Poland, they pushed. It was like, no, you're going to do this, you know, and they pushed us and they pushed us and it didn't matter how tired we were. Cause I was like, oh my God, you gotta be kidding me, but they did it. And, and it was consecutive and, and it was consistent and, and we kept going and going and going. And, and that's what had me walking. Like I said, I wasn't walking around like twerking, but I was walking, you know? And so it was an amazing feeling. It was an amazing I, feeling. I, I, I always have have this joke that that I walk like 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 I'm drunk, so I better not not drink drink the matter for her. Otherwise, it's 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 a double But exactly. yeah, I mean, and for me, I often I realize that that when you laugh at yourself, or when you're able to make jokes about your condition, then it makes it easier to to to, to deal with. That's right, you know, and exactly. And like I say, I mean, like we all have insecurities. We just can't camouflage mine. You can't tell me, oh, I think I recognized you. No, you didn't. You didn't, rec- you didn't think I was somebody else. I am who I am. There's no hiding it. You know who I am. And it's just, we're out there, we're out front. And so exactly, I mean, we have to, if we don't, we're gonna just be in the bed crying all day. Like we got stuff to do too. And if I, you know, my husband, he walks, he's an able body, whatever, things like that. And he'll be like, come on. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding me? And he has to tell me stuff like that because we can't be so uh, sensitive. People don't mean harm. Not all the time. Sometimes people are nasty and mean, but you know, the ones that love you, they're going to say what they're going to say. They love you. And it's so funny to me because whenever I go to a nail salon or something like that, which I, I'm very insecure. That's my biggest thing that I, I, I tell people like my feet are not the same and, and things like that, you know, I'm insecure. But if I go into a nail salon that they, they, it's usually like Vietnamese and they don't, you know, they don't speak my language or whatever, but they always ask me, they always say, Oh, is your husband in a wheelchair too? And I'm like, no, but I didn't even come in here in a wheelchair. What do you mean? What are you talking about? You know? And so, um, it's like, are you, it's almost like, are you a part of a club? And I'm like, no, just because I'm disabled doesn't necessarily mean that every single person around me is disabled or my mate is in a wheelchair. No, I mean, could he be? Maybe, but it doesn't have to be that way. We are entitled to love who we love as well. We don't have to just be with somebody in a wheelchair. And if we are, we are, that's awesome. But it's don't just make such big assumptions. It's not that way. And so... Yeah. I feel I, mean, I feel that way. Yeah, yeah. Actually, but I think most of most of this insensitivity is is due to, is due to ignorance and right. And and that is the only way I can I can look at it and not get too pissed off because believe me, I I face a lot of um of seemingly stupid questions and and. And outdated opinions on disability here, 
because I mean, obviously, we are not as developed as you guys are when it comes to disability issues and other things. And that is why I do a lot of advocacy and yeah. because to, to educate people on various types of disabilities and all that. So that, so that when they see somebody with a disability, they will not have those preconceived notions about people with disabilities. I mean, here, a lot of children with disabilities are locked up in the room. The families do not want people to know that they have a, they have a child with a disability. And all That's things. heartbreaking. Yeah, it is, it is. And for me, I always say that I, I'm so blessed to, to, to be in a family that I, that I, I was born into. Otherwise, yeah. there's nothing that, that, that differentiates me from, from, from that child who's locked up in the room. So, right, right. So, so yeah, so that is why I took it upon myself because I feel that I have a calling. I mean, God, God has blessed me, me, me so much that, that I can be a role model to a lot of people, yes. both, both, both able-bodied and disabled. So I, I, have, so I have no choice but to, but, but to be the role model that I was meant to be. So although it, it can be... Oh, this can be very frustrating sometimes, especially when you're not getting the results that you want, or people are still asking you a lot of stupid questions. You, yeah. you, learn, you, learn, you learn how how to deal with it. And, yeah. and, and sure, once in a while you give you, you give a sarcastic response to a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, exactly. I'm sure can, you, you can you can you can you can you can. You can you can relate to that a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have a slick mouth on me. I do. <laughs> and I try not to, but you know, and, and that breaks my heart to hear about the kids because that's one thing that I was, I, I always talked to my husband about. I said, you know, I was so afraid to travel to other countries because even in Pan in um, Poland, it's so different than it is in America. It's, it's, it's so, so different. And it's sad. Because in America, we have rules and guidelines like, look, this is not acceptable. I mean, like, well, you can have a lawsuit over something like the things that happen. It's, it's not acceptable. And it, it scares me because um, I want to go back home with him. I want to visit and things like that. But I have to be honest, I am a little, I'm, I'm nervous, you know, like I'm different. And, and um, it's so sad. I, I, I agree. I think sensitivity training is, is so huge. People just don't know. So they see our physical being and they just assume we're not, we're not mentally there. Well, we are, we're very smart. And I understand everything you're saying just because I didn't walk in this room like you doesn't mean I don't understand. Exactly, and, and, and sometimes you are with somebody and, uh, and people prefer to talk to the person about you rather than, than talk, talk directly to you. And that's the crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's my biggest pet peeve. I'm like, wait a minute, I asked the question, why are you talking to her? Like. And I say it, and then they feel they're like, oh, oh, well, I'm like, well, yeah, what's up? <laughs> you know? I, I, remember, I remember a few times before, I mean, when it, uh, about a few years ago, when, okay, so let's say about 15 years ago, before, before, before people started knowing me and me telling tell, tell, them off a few times, I'll go somewhere, I'll go to the shop with my driver, when we get to the to the counter, I'll take out the money to to pay the cashier because the driver is standing by me with holding the, the thing that I have bought. So when when I take out the money from my bag to pay the cashier, then the cashier will, will, will give the change to the driver. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm the one who gave you the money. Why can't you give the, the change to me? Or, or, or I'm, I'm smart enough to give you the money, but I'm too dumb to, to, to collect my change. Is that what you have <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any logical sense. But I, I, sometimes I wonder how they think. Exactly. Exactly. You know, that's so funny. Yeah, I, I, I have a YouTube channel. I don't know if you're aware, but I have a YouTube I'll channel. Check it out. Yeah, it's called, um, I think I have it, Valerie Thriving with CP. And... I have a whole video about that. I, I mean, like, it's just crazy. I'm like, didn't I just ask you the question? 
or another thing I'll get is if I'm sitting down, you know, when I was younger or whatever, I liked, I liked the club. I like to be out and listen to music and stuff. But um, somebody would come up to me and, and they'd say, come on, do you want to dance? And I'd say, no, 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 no. Those are my crutches under there. I can't dance. Don't pull my hands because I'll fall on the floor. Like, don't pull my And they'd say, oh, you think you're too pretty to dance and things like that. And then when I get up on my crutches, like, oh, I had no idea. You don't look disabled. And I'm like, that's a backwards compliment. Is there a particular look? Like, you know, that's crazy. Have, 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 have you ever been told you are too pretty to, to be disabled? Yeah. And I'm like, that's that's actually an insult. Yes, it is. It is. It is. You know? It is. Yeah. And, and people don't understand that, like, oh, well, I would have never known. And I'm like, well, there, do, should I wear a sign? Like, what? this is crazy. And so, you know, people think, like, oh, that's that's such a nice thing to say. No, it's actually not. It's actually rude. It is. It is. People are beautiful, period. You don't have to add disability, color, anything. So our children are biracial. My husband's black. And uh, we tell our children, like, you can be anything in this world. It doesn't matter what your color of your skin is, what your disability is. You treat every single person in this world the same, no matter what. Fat, skinny, whatever. Everybody is beautiful, period. That's it. You don't have to say, oh, you're pretty for being black. Oh, you're pretty for being in a wheelchair. No, you're just pretty. That's it. <laughs> you know? And so, yeah. It's crazy. And people truly think it's a compliment. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. 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 But, but hopefully, as, as you and I do programs like this and we raise more awareness, and somebody, other people watch it, and hopefully, those things would come down at this. I don't, I mean, because let's face it, it's, it's far better than it was 20, 30 years ago. When, when I was oh, yeah. Up here. So, so I mean, I, yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I think the people, I think people are more in tune and they want to know. They're, they're curious. And now they're coming at it in a better way. Sometimes they act crazy and they just boldly, hey, what happened to you? But I think acceptance has come so far so far from where it was and that's amazing yeah yeah where is this program going to be played at pardon where where is this recording where are we going to be played at so, so I, I have a facebook page and, and an instagram page called municipal disability so i will send you the link after after we, we finish with this program awesome now um do, do you think sometimes we, we, we are a bit too sensitive? Um, I think sometimes, I, I know I am for myself. I think that, um, I, I think I've come a long way, but I, I think because, I, I don't know how it was for you growing up, but it was really hard for me growing up. Um, not to the point where, like you said, um, suicide thoughts and things like that, because that does happen, uh, but being different, I think I, I have my wall up so high, I automatically assume, well, they're staring at me because I can't walk or he doesn't want to date me because he's embarrassed of me immediately. That's the first thing I run to is CP. And it's, and it's probably not always the case. I think that I, I, I think in my situation, I've been so guarded with my feelings because I've been so hurt so many times. And I'm like, no, they're just doing this. They're just doing that. For example, um, we have a gym and this was a while back i wanted to go work out at the gym and obviously i don't work out like i'm not like misfit but you know i want to get on the bike and i just want to move around and when i go into the gym i'm like stared at immediately like you know and i'm like told my husband i said i'm not going to the gym anymore because i get stared at so much and i'm over it and he's like maybe people are like well i need to get my lazy self up if she's in here i need to start working out and i was like you're probably right. And he's like, yeah, you can't always jump to the negative. And I was like, uh, true. So How good, do you feel? So growing up, I, I was scared at, at a lot, but then I left, I mean, as soon as you get out of the car, everybody stops what they are doing and starts staring at you. But, mm -hmm. but, but I went it out psychologically that, hey, it's because I'm beautiful. That's, why that's right. That's why they're staring at me because that's the only way, way I, I, I could deal, deal with it. So after a while, I got used to, used to them 
know me that me so much that that when when, when I get up and nobody was telling that me, I'm like, hey, why are you both telling that me? <laughs> yeah, so 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 that is how, how I grew up because I lived I lived in the Caribbean, the Commonwealth of Dominica, Grenada, growing up. I I grew up all over the world. I, I lived in both developed uh, and developing countries before moving to Ghana. So um I, 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 I know what, what it's like to live in, in, in a developed world as well as, wow. as a developing country. I, I, I went to, to university in the UK where I was totally independent for the first time in my life. I could, I, I actually used, used a scooter like, like, like yours to move around the campus. Then, then, then I got a motorized wheelchair because I was so bad at driving the scooter that I kept on <laughs> crashing it into into surfaces and all. It takes time. Yeah, <laughs> it does. It does. It does. But, but but I was I was totally independent for the first time in my life. I could I could go shopping. I could do everything. I I remember the first time I had to cook because I have never cooked cooked before. Because everything was done for me as a child. Yeah. And uh, so yeah. But but but. But I think it, 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 it taught me that I could, I could live on my own if, if I needed to, and I could be self-reliant. So if I had that situation where I need to be self-reliant, and I, I know how to do it. And then I also say that, look, there's a bunch of disabilities. We are the most adaptive creatures in this world. We know how to adapt to any situation that we find ourselves in. Because after yeah. that, as soon as you go, you, you go into an into an an unknown environment. The first thing that you are looking out for are the possibilities of of danger. I don't know about you, exactly. but exactly yes. I'm looking at the tile. <laughs> like, okay, wait a minute. Is there any water? Am I going to slip? Exactly. <laughs> the first thing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so so it's like it's like yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, you're looking at the ground. Is is it? Are, are, are the tiles slippy? Is that what's on the floor? Uh, is is the address yes. Are those right. stairs? Yeah, all those things. Mm -hmm. So so it's like as soon as we we enter certain hours, our minds are racing. But, uh, people are like, well, what are you doing? And it's like, no, I'm 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 gauging the place, trying to find out how to how to maneuver my way around this this place. When 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 yeah. I'm tra when I'm traveling, I have to to um to 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 find out whether whether the hotel ha ha had a disabled room. I don't to the extent that I even ask them to take pictures of the bathroom and send it to me because because because, yes. because sometimes the, the, the definition of a disabled room is, is not it's not what 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 it is so. I need evidence and all those things. So I mean, when it comes to adaptive, dear, we are we are the best, and I think it's something that, that we should we should we should pat ourselves on the back for because not everybody can can, can live the life that we live. I oh man, I agree so much. It's so funny, yeah. The second like somebody wants to invite me somewhere, I'm like, well, is there tile? Is there somewhere to sit? Is there this? Is there that? Because that's all that's going through my mind. Like I want to make sure. I don't fall, you know, and, and people, they just assume like, oh, you know, she, she's the same. No, I'm not the same. No, I'm not the same. I will fall. And so I think exactly our minds immediately go to that. And also you made a good, you know, a, a good gesture. Like when you, you said that you, when you use the scooter, you felt independent. A lot of people look at scooters like, oh, how sad she's in a scooter. What do you mean? How amazing I can do everything I need to do. This is, it's, it's a plus, you know, and, and people look at, oh, she's in a wheelchair. This wheelchair makes me live my life. This wheelchair makes life possible. It's not always a downside, you know, it's actually, it's amazing. And, and the sad thing is a lot of people, you know, they, they assume at least with me, oh, well, she's disabled. Everything is covered under insurance. No, that's not true. You know, so if you are, if you do get a mobility scooter, that's awesome. Now you can live your life to the fullest. It's not a downside. It's it's amazing. 
You know, you know, I came up with, with a comic called Kamza, which features the first superhero, the Cyber Force. Because growing mm. up, growing up, we, we didn't have, have any superheroes in Cyber Force. So I, I, I wrote the story and I got um, somebody to, to, to draw the cartoon images. So if, I, I'll send you the, the link, it's available yeah. on Amazon. But, uh, but the reason why, why I came up with that was so that children with disabilities will, will feel represented in the, in the superhero world. And secondly, yeah. secondly they'll, they'll feel proud of using their assistive devices because, because the superhero, get, she gets her power from her crutches. So, 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 awesome. so, so without her crutches, she's powerless. Right. It's awesome. It's a power. Right. Yeah, that yeah. So, awesome. so, so that is how, how so, so, because I realized that, the, that the, all, the, all the, our assistive devices give, give us some, some independence. Growing up, there were times in, in my life that I resented having to use those assistive devices. And I'm sure it, yeah. you also went through that. I totally agree. And I think that it's almost like we want to be shameful or we're, we're, we're thought to be shameful for it. And uh, we should celebrate who we are. We're pretty fantastic. <laughs> We've been through a lot. We don't have to be ashamed. We can teach so many people to, hey, get over your sad story. Look at mine. Get over it. You know what I mean? And, and jump on my scooter. So my scooter makes my life so much easier. I know that when when I started driving, I drive with hand controls. Um, I was, I, I was still, I didn't want to say I was disabled because when I was in the car, I was the same as everybody. Nobody's seen me. I'm exactly the same. So I didn't want to put a handicap license plate on my car or put it in the window so I can park up front, even though, hello, that would make my life a thousand times easier. I was way too cool for that. But now I'm like, racing the old lady next to me like i'm gonna get this face first move i got my head cap plate you know you just you get over it you're like what's gonna make my life easier these things that i need to use that are adaptive like you said adaptive mobility scooter a handicap plate who cares that's awesome people want to park where you're at they don't get to <laughs> you know we're the first ones in disneyland to go on the rides there's a lot of awesome things about us so we need to celebrate who we are and not be shameful I agree. thank you so much valerie it has been so lovely having this conversation with you i hope you right. I hope you have also had, had, had a nice time having a conversation yes thank you so much i'm so happy that you um, were able to contact me and allow me to speak with you and you are so beautiful i want to tell you, you're so so pretty and and i i appreciate what you do and and i think it's awesome that you're you're out there educating people and and letting them know hey we're the same as you guys maybe a little better just that, kidding that, 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 that's a little better <laughs> that's a little better okay. get to know one of us yeah all right yeah. i i thank you and and we are friends for life and i'm here if you ever need to chat uh, uh, some, 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 some goes for you, some goes for you, and, uh, and say hello to your beautiful family, and I hope to, to, to first time with, with you sometime, and meet them yes. all. All right, I hope you have an amazing day, thank you, and thank you for the time difference and working me in, I appreciate it. It's my pleasure, have, have, have a lovely weekend. You too, bye. Bye-bye.